We've been working our way through the first chapter of Colossians, and last week we did verse 15. Um, this week we're going to be in verse 16. It's coming out of this really begins in, um, this passage begins in verse 13, where Paul, describing the work of God the Father through his son Jesus, says that he, the Father, has delivered us from the domain of darkness. And that's that rule or authority, dominion of Satan upon this earth. He's delivered us out of that domain of darkness, and he has transferred us, those of us who, who believed unto Christ to salvation, he's transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins. It's in the beloved son. We receive and have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And then in verse 15, we talked about how he says, he, Jesus, the beloved son, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. And how that meant that the, the Jesus is the image. He's the revelation. He reveals the father to the creation. The Hebrew says he's the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature. As the, be the only begotten son of the father, he is the exact imprint of his nature. He told Philip in John, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. And in this way, Jesus, the son, reveals the invisible God who dwells in unapproachable light, who no one has ever seen nor can see. He reveals him to the creation. Um, and, and then he is the firstborn over all creation in, in the terms of the fact that he is the only begotten and he receives all of the inheritance. All things, as Colossians is going to say, were made by him, through him, and for him. And so that brings us into that verse in Colossians. And it starts out, verse 16, like this, by him, by Jesus, by the image, by the beloved son, by the firstborn over all creation, by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth. And this is a huge statement in regards to the identity of Jesus. It brings us back to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But we just read right here in Colossians, it says that by Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on earth. And I want to show this truth that, that Paul is um, extrapolating on here in verse verses 15 through, through 20, really, or through 18, about the identity of Jesus and who he is, not only who he is, but who he has always been. Um, this is something that has been taught through the entirety of Scripture from the very beginning. In Genesis 1, it says, in the beginning, God. And this word for God is Elohim. This is the plural form of the word God. And yet it's not translated as gods. In the beginning, God's created the heaven and the earth. It's translated singular. It also throughout this passage uses singular pronouns. He, his, him, right? <clears throat> um, you see in verse one of Genesis where it says in the beginning, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God is one in essence and three in person. Okay, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All three persons of the Trinity were involved in the creation of the heavens and the earth. They work together in divine unity, using divine authority, right? And it says in the beginning, God, Elohim, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit created the heavens and the earth. It says the earth was without form and void. In other words, it had no shape. It had no form. Um, there was chaos and darkness covered the face of the deep. So everything was in darkness because there was no light at this point in creation. And it says the Holy Spirit, so this is the Spirit of God, rather, the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. This word hovered here is used in, in another place in terms of a mother eagle and how she hovers over her young in the nest to care for them, to, to tend them, and to keep them until they are formed enough to be able to fend for themselves. Okay, and so the Spirit of God, this, this is mentioning the third person of the Trinity, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And God said, okay, and so this is God, the Father, speaking by his authority. It says, let there be light, and there was light. And in that moment, the divine command, through his divine authority, the divine fiat, this is the divine authoritative command of God. He commands, and his word goes forth to perform it, right? So we see in the beginning the Father, we see the word, and we see the spirit, right? We see that present in the creation of the physical heavens and the physical earth. We see something similar in John, John chapter 1. It says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, or the logos. This is the word in Greek is logos. In the beginning was the word, the logos. And the word was with God, and the word was God. So the logos was with God, the logos was 
God. There's a distinction and yet a unity here. And then it says in the next verse, it says he, so he was in the beginning with God. The, the logos, the word, is not a concept. It's not just an entity. The, the, the logos, the word that is with God and that is God, is a person. He was with God in the beginning. It says all things were made through him. All things were made through the logos, the word, the living word of God. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. And so everything that was made was made through through him. This sounds similar to Colossians where it says, by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, uh, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. It says, in him was life, and this life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And so this, this divine living word, logos of God, was with God, was God. All things were made through him. Nothing was made that wasn't made. And this, this uh, in him was life. So in the word, in the logos was life. And the life was light. And it says the light shines in the darkness. Remember in uh, Genesis chapter 3, the fall of man, where Adam and Eve um, heeded the voice of Satan rather than the voice of God. They, 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 plunge the world into spiritual darkness through their sin, their disobedience to God, and their obedience to the word of Satan. Then they did this. Um, the, the dominion that had been given to them, um, when God in Genesis chapter 1, it said, let us make man in our image. And, and it says, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And he gave them dominion over the, the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over every living thing, and over all the earth. This dominion they'd given to man, they, that they ended up handing through their worship of Satan, through their obedience to Satan, they ended up handing that dominion to Satan. And they plunged the world into spiritual darkness and death and chaos through sin reigned on the earth. This, John 1, John 1, is another beginning. Not only was the word with God in the creation of the universe, the heavens and the earth, but the word incarnated in in the living flesh. It says, um, the light shines in the darkness, okay? And so in this moment of God incarnating his word into the world once again, just as in Genesis, we said, let there be light, and the word went forth to perform it, and light pierced the darkness. Now here in John chapter 1, the, 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 the father sends his word, his son, into the world. His word, word incarnates, and once again, light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not overcome it. It says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John, who came to bear witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, it says, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Now it says of the light this, He was in the world and the world was made through him. So this is just as it says in the first couple of verses, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. It says, and the world, word was, the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. It says he came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. So it's sad, right? The world is made through um, the word of God, and yet when the word incarnates and is made flesh and comes and lives and dwells among them, they don't know him, they don't recognize him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him, but to all who did receive him. This is the redemption. Who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. It says this, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The logos, the word, the life, the light, this is all the Son the glory of God. And Hebrews says it the same way. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. So we see this theme in Genesis. We see this theme in John where the, the father speaks, the word goes forth to perform his word. So will this word be that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me void, but it will accomplish the purpose for which I have sent it. God sends his word. It accomplishes his purpose, right? And so do we see that theme of light to darkness, chaos to order, the, the word of God goes forth and brings light. It brings order out of chaos. In, in John, it brings light into spiritual darkness and into spiritual chaos into the word, world once again and brings life and light to men. And so back to this section in Colossians. It says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him, by him, by the image, by the firstborn, all things were created in heaven and on earth, 
visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were made through him and for him. And this description after by him all things were created, this is Paul just making sure you understand there's nothing that's left out from the list of all the things that Jesus made, okay? So he was not made because he was with God in the beginning. He's before all things, the next verse is going to say, okay? And so by him, everything that was created was created, okay? on heaven and on earth. So in, in space, everything to the farthest galaxy, as far as we can see in the universe, everything, every speck of matter he created. From nothing, he brought the substance of the entire universe into being. Okay, and then in behind the veil, in the terms of the heavenlies, right? The spiritual realm, angels, demons, all of it. Angels, demons are just angels that rebelled. So all of the angelic beings in all of their forms were created by Jesus, okay? On earth, everything of matter that is on the earth, every every molecule of oxygen and every molecule of water, all of it was created by him. Every plant, every animal, every person was created by him, okay? Visible and invisible, everything that we can see with our eyes, even if we look through the James Webb telescope, everything that you can see was created by him and the invisible, whether it's invisible because it's microscopic or whether it's invisible because it's a thing of spirit, everything was created by him. Okay. And then thrones, dominions, rulers, authorities. These are rankings of angels. As it mentions in Ephesians chapter six, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers and authorities and spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Okay, so everything that was created was created by him. That's why we don't have to fear um, the things of the spirit. We don't have to re fear a uh, demons. We don't have to fear the enemies of God. We don't have to fear human authorities, human rulers, human dictators, human terrorists. We don't have to fear anything. Everything, if it seems huge to us, was created by him. He literally made it all. Okay, and so this is saying nothing is left out from this list. By Jesus, everything was created. Through Jesus, everything was created. And for Jesus, everything was created. So let's just look really quickly at what this means, that by him all things were created. Okay, what this means um, is that Jesus is eternal. God the Son, he's the Logos, he's the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God. Okay, so he created everything. And in Hebrews chapter 11, it says it this way, by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the Word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. In fact, everything that is seen, everything, every bit of substance in the universe was created from nothing by the authority that is in God as the Creator, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's by Him. Everything was also made through Him, it says. Everything was made through Him in the sense that God the Father commands, uh, once again, and Jesus, the Word of God, goes forth, and He is the visible, the audible manifestation, the image of the invisible God, the radiance of the glory of God. Okay, through him, as John says, through him all things were created, nothing was created without him. Everything that was made was made through him. Okay, as Hebrews says, um, it says that in the, in the, um, it says, uh, in the former days, God spoke to his prophets, um, uh, spoke to our fathers through the prophets. In these last days, he's spoken to us through his son, whom he's appointed the heir of all things and through who whom he made the world. Okay, so through him was made um, everything that was made. He is the word of God. Okay, God the Father speaks, the word goes forth to perform it. But what does it mean that all things were made for him? Like, why did God create the heavens and the earth? Why did he create mankind? Why did he set all this up on this earth? Why has he done any of this stuff? The answer is that it's all for God. Christ, his son. The heavens and the earth, the universe, all of it was made for the son in the sense that it is, in, is, it is his inheritance. And everything that is made was made in its, it, it, the, the intention of it all, in its final, finished, eternal state. It was always meant to be the kingdom of the son of God, Christ on earth. In Revelation 21, it says this, behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. And that is the final state of the earth, that all um, the, the, the inhabitants of the earth would dwell in communion here with God. Just as Adam walked in the garden with God in the cool of the day, that was the intention over all creation for the final Adam, as 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15 says, the, the, the last Adam, the second Adam, that he would fulfill all righteousness for us in his life on this earth, that he would p bear the penalty for all of our sin and so fulfill the, the Levitical law on our behalf, and that he would um, uh, earn for us the right, once again, to stand in the presence of God through his righteous life and death and burial and resurrection and inaugurate the new kingdom, his kingdom on this earth, which we will consummate in the day when he returns, um, catches us up to meet him and makes us like him in glory. He reconciles all things to himself. 
all right? So this is what we're going to talk about further as we move through this passage into as it speaks about the redemption that Christ brings on this earth.